promised this is gonna be the second half of the video um here i have my hair this hair is from beauty forever and it did come in a lovely box um i already opened the box so this is just what is left i bought four bundles of hair and one closure and this is in the texture deep wave yeah this is in the texture deep wave um i bought all 16 inches i believe the closure is 14 inches and all the other hair is 16 inches this is the free part 4x4 closure that i have and it's really nice i love 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 the texture so this is what one of the bundles looks like straight out of the package again this is 16 inches and this is right out of the pack this is what the curls look like the curls are very curly nice and small it's really nice the hair doesn't have like a any you know kind of outstanding smells and the bundle size is pretty decent i was looking at all the wefts and they seem to come pretty well done i didn't see any big mistakes or any flaws like i do see in some companies bundles um they they came they look pretty good but i did wash the bundle to see if the curls were um mechanically put in to the hair or if the hair was actually curly and this hair is actually curly it's very 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 curly hair this is washed and this is right out of the package so this is what the two hairs look like okay guys so today i'm going to be using 40 volume developer and i'm also going to be doing be using bw2 and here I also have the Shimmer Lights shampoo. I also have the conditioner, but I find that just using the shampoo is enough. So I'm gonna be mixing this with a with approximately a one-to-one -one ratio, and then I'll be adding more powder accordingly. So I accidentally poured the powder in here before, but I always forgot that there's always numbers inside of your bowls. So you wanna make sure that you use those numbers. So usually I always do this one-to-one -one ratio and it always turns out pretty good, the perfect consistency for me. This is one scoop of bleach and one ounce of developer. And this is usually the perfect consistency for me. So now that I have that, I'm gonna take my closure and I'm gonna make sure that there's no stray hairs that are sticking out from the top or from the back. Now I'm just gonna place it here down on my stool and I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna get most of the product on the tip of the brush. This is what I'm gonna to use to put the bleach down with. As so, most of the bleach is on the tip of the brush. That way I can use light dabs to get it on the hair without making it seep through. This is what the hair looks like after washing it. As you can see, the curls are still very, very beautiful, very, very luscious, very, very bouncy. And this is what the frontal, the closure looks like. And I only left it on for 15 minutes because I don't usually like to keep it on for too long to have the bleach, the knots be completely blonde because it does make the hair a little bit more susceptible to breaking and becoming brittle. I'm gonna start off by using Deborah. This is one of my favorite um, mannequin heads to work on. She is a canvas head and I, um, this is the uh, mannequin head that I typically use. Um, as you can see, I don't know if you can see this, but on top of her head, if you watch my previous video, if you haven't watched my previous video on my tips and tricks on how to take care of your units and your sewings, make sure that you go back and watch that video because these are the dots that I was talking about. When I make dots on my um, closures or my customers' frontals that they bring, these are the dots that I make so that I can patch up some of the bald spots that they have in their um, closures. And don't worry about all these little lines on my canvas head. I did a unit with hot glue and it seeped through on my unit and when I cleaned it off this is what it looked like. This is a weaving cap that I'm going to be using. This is the deluxe multi-use weaving cap and I like this weaving cap because it's made out of mesh so it makes it a lot easier for my hair to be able to breathe while I have my units on when it's hot outside or like if it gets wet and it's raining. The mesh typically dries a lot faster than the spandex caps. The only thing that I would like to say about this is because it is mesh it does stretch a little bit more so I do find that the, the units are a little bit 
looser on my head and it does have this little this little tail piece at the bottom so it does make the unit a little bit bigger but in my case it doesn't matter because I wear chunky braids underneath my unit so I usually don't care and one tip that I like to mention is if you have a canvas head your canvas has these lines here for a reason these are the lines that you're gonna take and use to line up with your spandex or your mesh cap this line that you're following just make sure that it lines up it doesn't have to be perfect but once you do that you know that your cap is centered I'm gonna ensure that the front of the the front of the lace goes just slightly in front of the cap When I'm doing the back, I want to make sure that I don't stretch it at all because if you do, it could result in your closure um, finishing off as lumpy. You could get, it could cause lumps. So you just want to make sure that you just lay down the way it should be. Okay, and I have three needles. I usually like to thread all three of my needles before I start so that once I run out, I can just grab another one. And these are particularly really, really long because I don't like having to thread my needles every two seconds. As usual, I'm just gonna start from one corner and work my way over to the other. And for my first needles, I always like to thread it through the loop. And make sure that's nice and secure through the mesh first, then through the unit, then through the closure. When that comes out, you wanna take it, take it, grab the thread, grab the thread, go around once, go around twice, and then pull it through. Pull it tight, take the needle, go through the mesh, then go through the closure, grab the thread, go around once, go around twice. So from here, I'm gonna knot it off. I did a double knot. I'll show you how to do that one more time. Lock it in place. And then pull. And cut that off there. Now to do my knots, I simply take the end, put it around my two fingers so that I have a loop. This is the loop. I'm going to take this piece, wrap it around the back, through the loop once, through the loop twice. Then you want to grab this small piece, take your free hand, pull the bottom of the knot up. This will give you a nice thick double knot. I'm going to now start from the front and work my way back. Again, I'm going to pull that through. And right before I get to the end, I'm going to put my needle right through the middle underneath the knot. This is the knot from the first time I went around. I'm going to go right behind that knot as a security push the needle through the mesh, push the needle through the closure, behind once, behind twice, behind three times. This is my last knot, so I do a triple knot. I make sure that this knot sits behind the first knot that I made so that it really does act as a security just in case that knot goes loose. There's a second knot right behind it that will catch the thread. And then I do my finishing knot, which is take my thread, go behind it once, go behind it twice, go behind it three times, pull, and lock it down. Now I'm going to start working on the bundles in the back. 
So I've already prepared all four bundles. And I'm going to take the first bundle, same as though they're all the same length. I'm going to take the first bundle and I'm going to double weft it and put it in the back. I'm going to start by taking my needle and pushing it through the end. This is the end where it's separated and I'm going to push it through the side, push it through the middle of the two wefts. Now, the side that I pushed it through, because the knot is on the outside, I'm going to put it on the left side. Okay. And I'm just going to use the same exact method that I did at the beginning when I was sewing down the closure. I like to push it through the bottom, up to the top making sure that I'm going through the mesh. Once I do that, I pull it through, I go behind it, inside the loop once, inside the loop twice, pull. And as, of course, I am not going to be cutting these bundles because once you cut them, you risk a lot, of more, a lot more shedding than the hair would naturally have. So what I tend to do is I curve my tracks up slightly. I put my last knot in, make sh making sure that it's as close to the edge as comfortably possible. Once I do that, I do my double knot, then I take my wefts, take out my T-pin, as I hold the thread up, I'm going to take the wefts and pull them in the opposite direction. This will now be pinned down. This will now be my second row. I take my needle and I like to go right through that same exact spot, except now I go on top, all the way at the edge, push it through, push it through, and then I go, I turn the needle and I go back in the opposite direction, just so that I can make sure that this thread is flat. After doing this, after folding it, I like to do a simple double knot. and I move on as usual. Okay, you guys, so this is where I'm at right now. If you can see, I'm still double wefting all the tracks and I'm doing them relatively close together because I have four bundles. Now, this is what it looks like. And this is it. And this is the side. This is the side. This is the other side. I'm still working on this side, obviously. This is what it looks like so far. So now that I'm at this edge, I'm going to show you guys again how I do my fold over method while I'm double wefting. So I'm, I have, I've sewn all the way out to the edge and I have my thread, my free hanging thread. I'm going to pull this tight, nice and tight. Now I'm going to take the free end of my tracks and I'm going to pull them over to the opposite side, all the way over here. Now you can let go the thread and use your hand to help pin down the hair. Take this, 
T-pin and pin it down to where you know the next fold will be. Now I'm gonna just take this one and put it all and bring it all the way forward. Now that I've gotten here, this is where the ear tabs are going to be. I'm going to bring this one all the way forward. So I'm going to pin it out here. And then this is what it looks like, nice and free. It's still like pretty loose so that it's not pulling on over here. I'm going to take this string again. I'm going to pull it tight, nice and tight. And then I'm going to take my thread. I'm going to put it through the edge where the bend is. Make sure it goes through both tracks. I'm going to push my needle through. And then I'm going to go out a little bit farther than what I did. So instead, like, this is where I want, right here is where I want the track to fold over to. So I'm going to take my thread and push it right through that spot. And now that that's through, I'm going to take, this is the loop, pull it through. This is the loop that I'm left with. I'm going to take my, my needle and push it through it once, push it through it twice, push it through it three times, and then pull. Make sure you pull it super tight. Now, once that is through, I'm going to go less than a half a centimeter away from it, nearly on top of it and put my next thread exactly right there. Push it underneath both tracks, around the back once, around the back twice, and pull through. Okay guys, so here's another tip that I have for when it comes to making, putting two tracks together when you're done with one and you're about to add another one. So what I like to do is put my last knot all the way at the tippity tippity end of the thread, at the end of the track. Push that through, triple knot, one, two, three, pull that through. Make sure that's nice and tight. Then I wanna triple knot this. Pull that through. There we go with that. I'm gonna grab my next bundle. So now I have my next bundle. And again, I'm starting with the two open sides. Put those together. And I'm going to push it through the front of the, the two tracks. Then, once I push it through the front of the two tracks, I'm going to go close enough to my previous tracks, but not on top of them. Pull this through. Once I pull this through, as usual, I'm going to hold this up on the other side. Then I'm going to tighten this and then double knot. Once I do that, I double knot that. And then I keep going as usual. As you can see, this looks like one consistent track. It doesn't look like I, I have two tracks here and it's nice and smooth. This is what I have left, this little teeny tiny section, and I'm completely finished with um, this row. 
I just put the thread through the double tracks and then I triple knotted it, cut the tracks, cut the thread. This track is going to be attached both to the closure and the mesh and it's going to be put in this small section that's going around the unit. So, and this is the only this is the only track that's going to be going inside of the um this unit that's going to be single wefted and i'm going to sew just as i was doing before except this time i'm going to make sure that i'm going through the mesh and the closure double knot it pull it down through the mesh through the closure double knot pull it down All right guys, so I put in that last track and the unit is done. So let me show you guys what the inside looks like. You see, as you can see in the middle, I started to make them a little bit bigger, but the bottom is nice and close together and the top is nice and close together. And we're all done here. We're all done putting in the tracks. Let's let this closure go. those curls was so nice so nice so this is what it's looking like this this is what it looking like so far so now I'm going to add a couple final touches to it including hair clips and an elastic band so that it can stay comfortably on my head and I'm going to pluck the front the hairline at the front and add a few baby hairs and you know make it look good all right guys so i just finished making the cap i added a wig clip to the center of the nape of the cap and i also added a seven and a half inch elastic band now i'm going to just pluck the baby hairs and make it look a little bit more natural
All right, so now I'm just gonna let this sit in this bag for about an hour and then I'm gonna come back, rinse it out, and then show you what the final look is. These are the curls. This is the finished product. I didn't get a chance to show you guys what it looked like, but this is it. And these are the two products that I use to make it curly. This is just a bottle of water. And then this is the motions. Hey guys, so I actually ended up purchasing a different closure for this unit. I really like the look of the deep curl, but it was a little bit too curly for my liking. So I ended up purchasing the deep wave by a different vendor. The link will be down below, but I really, really, really love the way this unit came out. If you like it, please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Bye.